Hey everybody, welcome back to STR Anomics. It's another Thursday morning. Excited to be here with my good friend, Kenny Bedwell from STR Insights. How are you today, Kenny? What's up, everybody? I'm doing great today. Everybody? What about me? You're part of everybody, oh, right? Okay. I'm everybody. Gotcha. <laughs> um, today, we're going to talk about the seven steps to making successful investments. And we're going to go through each one of these processes because Kenny and I do a lot of coaching, a lot of consulting, we're at a lot of events, and I think a lot of people bypass a lot of these steps. And then that's where you can get into, you bypass the steps. Let me take a step back. If you go through each one of these steps and you know how to execute them correctly, you are going to minimize the likelihood of making a mistake. And when we're talking about putting 50, 100,000, 200,000, 300,000 dollars down on properties, those are, these are some of the biggest investments that we're going to make in our lives. And I can tell you, uh, prior to this, I'd built a $50 million company and two $30 million companies. And I had never even come close to spending a hundred more than a hundred thousand dollars to start those companies. Now, you know, I'm buying properties, spending a hundred, 200, 300,000, you know, on a regular basis, you've got to know how to invest correctly. And this all starts, Kenny, right with your, your plan, correct? I mean, you got to have a, a strategic plan. Um, usually I cover this, but I want you to kind of give a kind of, you know, we went to the very first mastermind meeting you sat and we spent like five hours going over how to build out a plan. What do you do today with your plan before you start investing? Oof. Putting you I on the hot seat. Minutes. Yeah. yeah. All right. Um, so, I mean, the first question is, uh, why? You know, I know that sounds stupid, but like, why are you buying specifically this property? You know, what is the purpose behind it? What is the ultimate goal? Where is it supposed to get you in life? You know, if you're trying to leave your nine to five, is it is it to help build that? You know, like where where is this going? And, and you know, what ultimately are you trying to get from this property? Answering that that question will help you know um, really where to start, where to start looking, how to like run your numbers and everything like that is building that foundation around the why. So I didn't know how to build a plan until 2015. I was just running through business to business aimlessly and I learned how to do it. And then I literally go through and I, I literally, you, do you have a copy of this? I don't know. I don't think anybody, like, I don't think anybody in the STR industry has a copy of this. I'm actually going to redo it. Uh, specifically what, for, for you, you got to tell people what it is. It says Bill Faith's success plan. It's a success plan. It's what I've used in my masterminds uh, in other industries. And basically, like we're talking about, Kenny, so we go in and the first thing we do is we define, um, you know, our first three life goals. I mean, this is kind of everything that you go through. Uh, as you see it, you define your life goals, what you're going to achieve, why you're doing this, as you said, your annual goals, your details, KPIs. So you hear me talk about how do you distill a retirement decision and then track it on a daily basis, right? Your successes. So I start with this in any big life decision, any business that I'm going to start with. And, you know, it's, it's amazing to me that, uh, and that actually is being retooled and that's going to be replaced. Oops, wrong finger with war room, uh, <laughs> right there. Just FYI. Um, it's without a plan, as somebody, I did 21 startups without a plan. And I mean, a detailed plan, you know, I want to define retirement, I want to define outcome, financially, uh, how much debt, how many, you know, investments do I need? How much passive income? How much non passive income? How much time do I plan on working? All of these things need to be determined to get to our outcome. You have a completely different exit strategy, potentially in one of your businesses, than we do like in the STR space, right? So all of those things have to go into making those decisions to set you up for success. And what I talk about these big life decisions to where we can distill them down to make the daily decisions. And, you know, I think, and then you can break that down and look at that as Kenny's talking about property by property. So I just bought a property in Montana and by no way, shape or means is that financially going to get me to my goals. I could only buy that property once I'd hit my big financial goals. Does that make sense? Yeah. So, but then the next step is, okay, I, I've defined my plan. Now it's like, where, does, where do we go? Where do we go from here? Where are we gonna buy? That's where that guy comes in, 
right? So I'm the guy that helps you build the plan. Kenny's the guy that comes in and identifies the market and the individual properties, right? So what's, what's get two or three keys to picking out a market? So the two or three keys, well, I mean, I always tell people that the biggest things we're looking for before we even look for a market is identifying what our revenue goals are specifically for that short term rental property. So I always talk about the cash on cash return, the cash flow, and then also looking at potential tax savings and appreciation because there are benefits. I know we, we always talk about you don't pick a market, you don't buy a property because of those things, but there are benefits and certain where certain markets are better than others. You can, and they can still cash flow. They can still have, you know, take tax savings, for example, if you are going to do a cost segregation, you know, it's better to be in markets where the land value is less than the building value. So for example, the, the ratio, I should say. So for example, Tennessee, uh, has a very low land value compared to the t uh, building value in a lot of the markets there. Whereas in Florida, New York, California, where the property taxes are higher and the land value is significantly higher, um, it has less of that. So a cost segregation study would be more beneficial in states like Tennessee than in Florida. So and if you're making a lifestyle decision, like you want to go to the beach as opposed to a financially driven decision, then you may want to consider a condo that has no land value and the highest cost seg return benefit. Exactly. So those are the things that you want to figure out and determine um, inside of your plan. Um, so once you have your budget and you have, um, you know, you kind of figure out the market, how do you distill down to the properties, Kenny? Okay. So you have your budget, you know, which markets you're trying to target and you should probably be looking at multiple markets and not just one. So, Identifying properties, it, it really comes to identifying first where in the market you want to look. So know the sweet spots, know the micro markets is what we've kind of referred to it before. So where do properties perform the best in this market relative to the prices of homes? So you, so in my opinion, before I even start looking for properties, I study the markets. I study where you should be looking in those markets and what works and what doesn't work. So when I go to start looking for properties, I already have a rough idea of what they can generate in those particular areas because I've done that research beforehand. It's almost like um, like a golden circle or, or you know, the, 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 the neighborhood or the community, the right neighborhood or community that you, you've identified that is excelling in that particular market. So doing that research beforehand, notice all this is just like stuff you're doing to prep to look for properties. You're not even looking for properties yet. And that legwork that you do beforehand will really set you up for success and help you identify a property that works a lot quick, quicker than if you just randomly looking all over the place for a property that makes sense. I agree a hundred percent. Um, so I built my plan. What, what, why do you keep muting Kenny? Do you have like a child or something playing with you in the room? That's okay. Where does that, the family show? Well, yeah. So like occasionally she just like screams out and I'm like, all right. It's okay. It's a family show. <laughs> I've right, got Tourette's chicken show. sauce. Yeah. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. Um, so number, build your plan for both professional and personal. Number two, we're, identify the market, identify the property. Once you identify the market, now you really need to find the best agent, right? So what are some things that you look for when you're, if you're going into a new market looking for, for an agent? Oh, well, the number one thing is they have to own or manage short term rentals themselves. If they don't do if they don't know that they don't know anything about short term rentals, you need to just turn around and like call somebody else. And, and it's no offense to them. It's just they don't have the experience and the know how to tell you to, to give you the slightest inclination that a property is going to generate revenue or not. Um, they'll go, oh, yeah, I've heard, you know, I heard owners in this area are, are doing well. Um, you know, I've, I've heard this or I've heard that. And granted, agents cannot tell you, um, legally tell you how much, they shouldn't legally tell you how much a property is generating or can generate um, to protect themselves. But at the same time, they can give you, uh, most good agents that own will tell you, hey, look, this property isn't it, you know, because of X, Y, and Z. And that's what you're really looking for. Someone with that experience, someone with that expertise to help you know what to avoid and what you should be looking for in that market. That is that is really great information. Right, so right. I, I mean, um, you know, it, and it really just, it it kind of depends on the market too. I mean, there's eight, there's some 
agents all over the place. Um, you know, we obviously we, you know, we love Tyler Kuhn because he knows his stuff in North Carolina. Um, but, you know, recently we've been working with uh, Avery Carl and some of the, the you She's know, now on the super team because I mean, I love, I love Deb Wood, you know, my girl down in Gulf Shores. I love Tyler, but you know, Avery's the goat. I mean, she's the best in, in, in the industry. Um, there's a reason she's on like Forbes and whatever it was, Inc's, you know, top 100, uh, right. you know, in the country. So selecting that right agent is absolutely critical. So I've, I built out my plan. I've got, I found my, my market and my property. I've got the best short-term rental specific agent. Um, and that's where a lot of people make a mistake. They just go with a regular, you know, residential agent, or they use, you know, your aunt Mary's, you know, nephew, Joe, who knows nothing about HOA regulations or any of that other stuff, um, or city ordinances. And then, then you get screwed. Uh, but the next part is you start to get prepared to go under contract, or even once you are in contract is banking and funding. And, you know, really knowing how to prepare for that is what's going to make or break um, typically how you're going to get funded. What institutions should you be looking at? Second home loan? What's your DTI? Do you know how to calculate that? Should you be going to do a DS, second home loans, DSCRs, local commercial banks? Should you be looking at 2-1 buy downs? Uh, what do you need prepared? It's not just as simple as having two years tax returns anymore. You, John Hodge, the bank whisperer on our super team has this phase one, phase two, phase three of preparation with personal financial statements, you know, your contracts, um, you know, potentially P&Ls if you're a business owner like I am and Kenny is. Like if you're buying mid-year, then you might have to do updated P&Ls. I just closed on a property three weeks ago. I'd have an audited P&L for 2022 for my primary business because I hadn't filed taxes yet. So all of those things, and it's not just as simple as, okay, here's my, my W-2 with, you know, two years tax returns and run my credit anymore. You need to present like you are the expert. You need to have the, you need to earn the confidence of the banker. And that's going to make a huge difference uh, when you walk into a bank and you have so many options today. Uh, that's where John, the bank whisperer Hodge comes in uh, with that stuff is as we move through the fourth step here. I, I would, you know, I could even argue that the fourth step should really like maybe even be the second step, <laughs> you know, like Agreed. before you, before you even look for properties and think what you can afford, you need to know what your banking and funding situation can look like. Um, it was funny. I had a conversation with a guy. He, he I think he listened, so I'm not going to say his name or anything else, but uh, we were, we were, he was telling me, um, you know, I asked him. How much, you know, how much do you want to cash flow per month? And he just, he's like, I put 3000 a month. I have no idea, but this is my budget. This is what I can afford. And, and this is the markets I want to be in. He wanted to be in Florida. And I said, we're, I was running a, a, a pro forma with him. And I was like, based on what you just told me, you know, your down payment amount of 10% or 15%, you know, the property would have to be grossing at a $600,000 budget uh, and your down payment amounts. It would have to be grossing well over 100k. You're not going to find that in the markets you just told me about in Florida. Just, you will not find that. Right. And so, being realistic about understanding your own numbers, and then obviously, like you know, your cash flow. And then I asked him. I said, "Well, why did you say three thousand a month? Like, what's behind that? You know, you need that money in your pocket, but why three thousand a month?" And uh, yeah, and it, it was just yeah, it was picked out of the thin air. And so I said, "Let's sit down and let's figure out what that true number should be." realistically, if you're set on these type of markets. And so, but that funding is huge because that plays a role, you know, that that debt service can really eats up the cash flow. And if he changes that, if he can do a larger down payment, that cash flow is going to increase by five to $7,000. So, 100%. And you need to understand that when you're looking at social media and all the BS and, oh, I'm getting 35% cash on cash, right? Yeah. Well, oh, you put 400 grand down on an $800,000 purchase. Got it. Now I know why that is. Um, the next one's really asset liability protection, right? And this really needs to be done before you close, uh, because the second you close, you you own all the liability of that property. Um, I mean, this is where Jeff Hampton, SCR Law Guys, is just the expert in this industry. Very similarly to like Avery Car Carl, um, you know, she owns she, you know, she's she owns properties just like Kenny does, just like I do. Jeff Hampton owns properties in Texas. There's a reason he's on the super team because he's the best 
at dealing with this stuff for us as short-term rental owners, everything from like contracts and the signage we need for pools and docks and boat rentals and that type of stuff to slip and fall at, uh, you know, properties, but it's also about insurance and it's about your corporate structure. The days of just having layered LLCs is not enough for your asset protection anymore. Um, you don't have to ha buy a full commercial policy uh, from proper, or if you get declined from someplace like proper Lloyd's of London, what do you do? Well, you know what? You can go to State Farm and get your residential homeowners, and then you can go back to them and get a liability policy. So there's these whole things of structure that need to happen with your asset and liability protection. It doesn't matter if it's your first purchase and you have less than a million dollar net worth, or if you have 25 properties that are all valued over a million dollars each and you have a, a $50 million net worth. We all need this to protect our families. And there's nobody better than this than Jeff Hampton. Yes, Jeff is the man. Um, you know, he's helped. We, we, we've kind of worked, we've actually worked out some new strategies and stuff. We're working around regulation too. And because he, he knows his stuff and, um, you know, I'll bring him concepts and he'll be like, well, Kenny, that that's not going to work. Or actually, you know, we can, you know, do this or that, um, you know, in this particular market, but it's all about setting up things properly before you go and, you know, go and purchase a property. It, it's a lot harder to to uh, buy a property or sorry, it's a lot harder to protect yourself if you don't do it beforehand, yeah. you know, before you actually do the purchase right. of the property. Do we have so. a special guest back there? Yeah, we do. I love it. <laughs> um, I'm going to jump to number eight because taxes, and this is a huge deal. Is that number eight? eight sorry. Is that? I went from number eight. five to number eight. I skipped number six and seven. I'm going back because okay, really, gotcha. All right. <laughs> really, Jeff, the attorney and your asset protection and your corporate structure needs to be tied into your tax strategy. And here's what happens in most cases. Like when I started, I have an attorney, Right. And my attorney doesn't know anything about short-term rentals eight years ago, right? Then I have a CPA who didn't know anything about short-term rentals eight years ago. So I'm what we call foobard because now I got to have them learn and talk to each other. Well, we have Ryan Bakey, who is the wonder kid. You know, I call him the MIT wonder kid, right? He's an investor, multiple, multiple types of properties too, which is pretty cool. You know, the guy owns laundry mats, invested in salons. He's building this huge like glamping tiny home thing in Branson. He's, uh, you know, he owns his own STRs, all this stuff, but he's also an expert in tax. So him and Jeff Hampton have been working together to where if you go to your attorney and they don't understand the tax implications and tell you to like set up in a, a sub S corp, right? As opposed to an LLC, your attorney is going to cost you tax dollars. Your, your CPA has to be working with uh, your your attorney on your entity structure and then how you're going about, you know, the taxes, the cost seg, the acquisition, the liabilities, all that stuff. That's the amazing thing that I love about the super team is we have Jeff and Ryan on legal, asset protection, liability, and tax working hand in hand. Boy, are we stacked. <laughs> it's, I mean, it's, like, it's pretty amazing to yeah. be honest with you. Yeah, it's, um, it's really I just cool. added this in number six, because this really kind of falls into all of us because we're all very experienced at doing this. The, the rehab and design, the rehab would really be like John Hodge, myself and, and the bonus is like my wife for design and setup and that type of stuff. But this is something, timing about this is really important. That's why you got to get this whole sequence down when you're investing. And it kind of goes back to that banking side and even the planning side on the front end. A lot of people get into this stage here and they wait until they close and then they start planning it. And then literally something that if you would have started ordering, once you get that pre-qualification, you know, from the bank a week ahead of time, buying that extra week is critical. In my case, the last one, it was almost three weeks before I closed. So my wife's ordering, we're having stuff shipped. I've got contractors ready to go. So like in Montana, my bathroom renovation, we closed at 9 a.m. on a Friday. Contractors were there at 1 o'clock. Same day. Because I want to get it done as quickly as I can. Because if I have to go through an entire month, that's a month's worth of carry costs. Right? So the planning stage ties into the having a tremendous real estate agent that's working with the title company like Avery Carl. You know, that type of stuff ties into the prep on the design, rehab, and setup process. Right? So that's number six. Number seven 
is marketing. Uh-oh. And we don't know anything about that, do we, Bill? You, you can talk about the marketing. Uh, I, really? <laughs> That's I'm just, so you, you have to, I mean, in my opinion, if you want to say, Kenny's laid the example in previous podcasts about 72% increase in STRs, the saturation in the industry, price, ever, those people that don't know how to do marketing, that don't know how to do pricing strategy, that don't know how to do listing optimization or email marketing or Facebook ads or social media, they only have one thing to do and that's click the button to lower the pricing, right? So we have to combat that. And the problem is, is if the marketplace goes down, we have to outmarket them. We have to be driving our own traffic, our own bookings, right? And that's where the marketing comes into play. And I, that's I where like, you get I like, sorry to interrupt. I just like the example, like everybody thinks like, you know, with marketing, I, I like the example of the billboards, you know, like you're driving down the road and you see the billboards and that's kind of like what Airbnb is. It's like <laughs> Airbnb is a billboard that you can put your property on. Mm -hmm. However, when more and more people, you know, are putting their properties on billboards, it's like driving, you know, whatever, what's Interstate 10 or whatever in Florida. And like every, it's like every like, Tenth of a mile, or every like bit, there's there's a there's another billboard, and you're like, yeah, you're it's it's Cracker well. Barrel, then a strip club, Cracker Barrel, then a strip club. That's exactly <laughs> yeah. what it is. <laughs> and then Disney is coming up, yeah. No. Yep. Um, but uh, no, so you know what else can we do? I mean, if you're thinking about the driving scenario, well, guess what? There's radio. There's other ways to market to people that they'll be able to, I you know find your property in unique ways. And so that we have to be thinking like that. We can't just think, oh, Airbnb and and that's it. This is an Airbnb business. It isn't. It's a short-term rental business. Shout out to Mark Simpson. <laughs> if, if you don't take charge here in your marketing, and it's one of the reasons that I have a competitive advantage over everybody else because Mark's the second best marketer in this industry and I am hands down the best marketer in this industry. And you got, it's not just me, it's Chris on the super team. Chris has run over $6 million in, in ads for me since he's worked for me in the last five and a half years. I've done close That's to crazy. 14, $15 million in ads. Um, I've been SEOing, you know, since 2003. It's, if you don't learn how to do this stuff and you can't sit back and pay an agency to do it because they're gonna suck at it. Believe me, I owned an $11 million agency. It doesn't work that way. And there's simple things that you can learn to execute that we teach you uh, that's going to give you such a competitive advantage over everybody else. And at the, at the very simplest, you got to know how to optimize your listing, optimize pricing, run Facebook ads, and do email marketing. Those are the big things. If you can learn how to do those well, you will have a distinct competitive advantage. And that's the fundamental reason of how I can outperform the 90th percentile by 55%. If you don't have that, you're going to be stuck just like everybody else clicking that button to lower your pricing. So those are the eight things. Build your plan. Find your market with Kenny. Build, I build the plan. Kenny does the mark, finds you the market and the property. Avery Carl does your negotiation, gets you through title, all that type of stuff. Banking and funding. John the Bank Whisperer Hodge is getting you prepared and teaches you how to whisper the bank, how to talk to them to get the best deals, how to find them at the right banks. You've got Jeff Hampton, STR Law Guys, on the asset and liability protection, the structure of how you should be structuring all of your entities and protecting all the assets, your family, your kids, your future grandkids. You've got design, rehab, and setup that comes along. You've got marketing with Chris uh, Wharton and I. And then you've got Ryan Bakey on the tax side, the how to keep your money that you're making that you're investing into this. There's only one place to get this, and that's with the STR Super Team. And we just happen to have just announced an accelerator program to where you can learn all of this stuff with weekly coaching and access to all seven of us coaches. Kenny Bedwell, Bill Faith, Chris Wharton, Ryan Bakey, John Hodge, Avery Carl, Jeff Hampton. Every single week, we are your team. If you want to take advantage of that, there's a link right down in the show notes. Uh, to check out the accelerator program. This Click is, <laughs> this is something that has never been done. And because we put the best of the best together, it's like top gun. It's like the Avengers. It'll never, ever be able to be replicated. So the question becomes, and we don't typically do any type of sales pitches on this podcast. We only do this twice a year. Do you want us on your team or do you want to compete against the people that are going through this program? That's really the decision that you need to make.
Thanks for watching STRnomics, everybody. We love you. We appreciate Thanks, you being guys. here. Hopefully we'll see you guys in the accelerator, but we know we'll see you next Thursday on the next episode. See ya. Happy hosting, everybody.